I am doing great. We're getting all this rain and it feels so good. And I'm counting it as a shower, so I don't have to have one this week. Oh my, I don't think that's a good idea, Michael. I got wet. Yeah, that's not exactly considered taking a shower. Mm. Mm, yeah, I think you ought to rethink that one. All right, so let's talk about last week's lesson. Michael, do you remember what it was about? Jesus. Yes, Jesus was definitely in our story. Wait, do you remember the story? Jesus teaches another lesson by something that James and John ask for, along with their mother asks for this, okay? They ask a favor of Jesus. They take him aside and they want to ask if they can be seated next to him on his throne in heaven. If one can be on one side and one can be on the other. Do you think that made the other disciples kind of jealous when they heard that? Yeah, because everybody wants to sit next to Jesus. Well, yeah, yeah. They were asking Jesus for something that he could not give them because Jesus responds by telling them that only his father has the authority to decide that. And Jesus tries to get gets all the other disciples around him because he wants to begin to help them to completely understand, right, what he's trying to say to all of them. And he says, here on earth, a person's greatness is determined by their position. The strong rule the weak and demand their respect. But in heaven, it is different, Jesus tries to explain. The greater your love is for others, the greater you are in the eyes of God. If you truly want to be honored in heaven, don't selfishly try to earn that honor by for yourself. Instead, think of yourself as a servant, Michael. Try to find ways to help and give to others. Even I, he says, the Son of God, did not come to this earth to be made a king. I came to give my life so that everyone might have eternal life. Yeah, he was a servant. Yeah, so we should not be selfish, asking for selfish things, right? We should always be thinking about others like Jesus does. So James and John were definitely asking for something that they shouldn't have been asking for. But we all end up doing things like that sometimes, don't we? Because we are human. So Jesus has to teach us a lesson, right? And that's what he's doing in this story is trying to help us understand so that we won't make those same mistakes. Hopefully, we can keep from making those same mistakes. All right, so that was last week's lesson. And we also have a new memory verse, right, Michael? Remember, it's Luke 6, 37. And I know the says, first three words. All right, what is it? Do not judge. Right. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. So I need to remember, judge, mm -hmm. condemn, mm -hmm. forgive. Right. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. All condemn, right. and you will be condemned. Condemned, yeah. Oh, condemned. All right, so this week's lesson, Michael, we have another lesson that Jesus is going to teach us, and he's going to do that in a story about visiting his friends, okay? So just like we like to go see our friends, right? Jesus also liked to go see his friends. Jesus and his disciples had walked from Jericho to Bethany. The long, dusty road had made them tired and very thirsty. In the village of Bethany lived Lazarus with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Guess what, Michael? They were friends of Jesus. In their home, Jesus could rest from all of his work. 
Jesus did not have a home of his very own. He did not have his own bed to sleep in every night. Sometimes he slept out on the ground under the bright stars. I so, never thought about that. Yeah, he did not have his own home. He didn't Sometimes, have a home or car? No, definitely had no car because none of them had cars back then. Sometimes a kind friend invited him to his home for the night. This always made Jesus happy and glad because he liked to be with his friends, just like we do. When Jesus reached the home of Lazarus, everybody was so happy to see him. So we have Martha, and we have Lazarus, we have Jesus showing up with the disciples. We're going to put some of our disciples in here too. Oh boy, so excited to see his friends, and his friends are so excited to see him. They did everything to make Jesus completely comfortable. They loved him so very much. Mary wanted to sit near Jesus and listen to all he said. So Mary came in. Jesus has a seat. She is so excited that he is there that she sits down at his feet to hear everything that he has to say. She is so excited that he is there and she can't wait to hear what he has to say. She wanted to know more about God and the wonderful place called heaven. Martha did not sit down to listen to Jesus. She had too much work to do, Michael. She was busy getting dinner ready. She wanted to make a very special dinner for Jesus. So we have Martha, who is working so hard over here in the kitchen, and then she brings in food. She's like, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. I'm working so hard over here, bringing out all this food, something to drink, got to have bread at the table. And dessert. Fruit, yes. I'm sure that was more likely to be their dessert back then. And Martha angel food didn't cake. sit down. She was just too busy. But it was not long until Martha began to feel very unhappy. What do you think she was unhappy about, Michael? The food didn't taste good. No, I bet the food tasted wonderful. She worked very hard on it. Took a lot of time on it. Uh, but let's if say, she's like my mom, I've been on my feet all day. Mm -hmm. Do you think that she was a little bit irritated with Mary? Because what was Mary doing? She's kind of hanging out on the floor like I do. Yeah, she looked like she was just relaxing. All her rushing to get ready for dinner caused her to feel tired. She still had so many things to do. She began to feel angry with Mary for leaving her to do all the work. She thought, why doesn't Mary come and help me? All she wants to do is sit and listen to Jesus. She could be helping me cook this dinner. Finally, Martha went to where Jesus and Mary were sitting. She had had all she could take, Michael. And she went over to where they were and dumped she a pitcher of water. Said exactly what she thought. No. Oh. Looking at Jesus, she said, Don't you care that Mary has left all the work for me to do? Tell her to come and help me, Jesus. On another day, it would have been right for Mary to do her share of the work, but today was a special day because Jesus was there, and Mary needed to hear what he had to say. Jesus wouldn't have much longer to teach, so the most important thing was to be with Jesus. Jesus listened to what Martha had to say. Then he said, Martha, Martha, 
you are upset over all these details. There's only one thing to be concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and I won't take it away from her. Jesus was trying to tell Martha not to be so busy, even she was doing things for him. She should take time to listen to him. Do you take time to talk with Jesus every day? Do you take time to let him talk to you by listening to his words? You have read from the Bible. Taking time to be with Jesus will help you to become more like him. He will help you to know the things you should do, and he will help you to do them. Won't you take time to learn more about Jesus every day? So there's a time, Michael, for doing all that work. And there's also a time to just sit and listen, right? And Mary had discovered the most important thing. And Jesus was not about to take that away from her because all this work could be done any other time, right? But right now, Jesus was there, and she was doing something very important as well. She was listening to the words that Jesus had to say, and that was the most important thing that needed to be done right then. And then I'm sure when Jesus was done talking, Michael, that everyone came in to eat this wonderful feast that had been made. Oh my goodness, where are we going to put all these wonderful people? Because I'm sure that Lazarus has probably went out and told others that Jesus is there. And we know that Jesus had more than just Lazarus as a friend, right? So I'm sure there was probably such a wonderful group of people that came to eat and to be with Jesus on this wonderful day that he had come to visit Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in their home. All right, Michael, so that is our story for today, and we will have a really awesome craft to do to go along with it, and I would love to to see you guys back again next week. So, you got um, anything to say? You got a joke or anything for us, Michael, at the end of our lesson? I was trying to think of one about a snail or something. Hmm. But I'm too slow. Ah, <laughs> Michael, Michael. All right. Goodbye, boys and girls. See you next week. Goodbye.